Good evening, everybody. Jeremiah Clark, Product Director for Lowrance Electronics. I'm here with Matthew Laster, the Product Manager for our Lowrance Displays. Tonight, we're going to walk you through the difference and some of the benefits and features in our Lowrance portfolio. So we like to say we have a good, better, best portfolio. Uh, we're going to walk you through here a little bit of just looking at some of the demo stuff and you know asking Matthew some questions about the differences in the products. We're also going to cut to a video we shot on the water showing some side-by-side, -side, head head-to-head comparisons. Uh, a little bit of how-to, so it's not yeah. just uh, what is the product line, but it's also, you know, how do we use it? How do we tune it? Can I see differences between the different product lines? But really, the question we get asked a lot is, why do you guys have three different product families? And kind of the first thing we want to do is jump in and talk about that. If you have any questions that come up along the way, we do have a full team of Lowrance members online ready to answer your question live in the chat. Once we come back from the video, we're going to be here to answer your live Q&A of that you guys have had like the popular questions or the tough ones. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and kick it over to Matthew. And Matthew, just kind of give me the quick overview. Why do we have three different product families and what's the difference? If you walk into a store, what are you looking for? Yeah, so you mentioned good, better, best, right? So we really try and have a display for every angler. So whether you're you know, maybe new to fishing or if you only get out a couple of times a year, we've got a product for you. If you're a hardcore guy fishing three, four times a week, we got one for you too. And if you're right in the middle, we have that as well. I wish I was the hardcore guy three, four times <laughs> a week. Don't we all, right? Yeah. <laughs> so that starts uh, right at the beginning with hook reveal. So this will be our, our more entry level type series. Hook reveal, we've really designed to be the easiest product on the market to use. Um, all the menus on it are super simple. We'll see a little bit of that on the water. It's really easy to fly around. Uh, you'll see it's mostly the smaller screen sizes, so it'll be available in a 5 inch, a 7 inch, and a 9 inch. Uh, then there's different sonar technologies as well. So if you need side scan, if you don't need side scan, there's a hook reveal for you. If you step up from hook reveal, you move into our Elite FS. This is our newest display. We've uh, launched this one last year, and it sits right in the middle. It's actually the most value packed fish finder in the market, I'm, I'm, I believe. So in terms of you know, all the performance, all the capability, you're gonna have a lot of things that you would normally have seen in the higher end, uh, but they're packed right here in the middle. So things like a touch screen, you're gonna have some networking. So if you wanna put in a, uh, like a dome radar or a new active target uh, live sonar that you're seeing here, that's pretty cool looking, Ghost trolling right? motor? Ghost trolling motor as well, all full networkable right there too. When you step up from Elite FS, you move into the ultimate fishing system here with HDS Live. So this is gonna be the one it's, this is going to control everything on your boat, basically. Ghost trolling motor, a bunch of different performance sonars, all kinds of radars, multiple units, really easy to build a big, sophisticated network so you have all your data wherever you're at on the boat. So the hook reveal, entry level, standalone, doesn't network to anything. So Correct. I assume it doesn't do ghost, it doesn't do active target. Right. Give me like the three things that just make this product amazing. It's easy. That's the big thing. It's okay. easy to it's easy to buy, it's easy to install, and it's easy to use if you want three right there. All right. So having a model basically for every angler, uh, you take it take it home, you're going to install it on your boat, super simple. Transducer mounting is really easy, power is really easy. Uh, actually mounting the display, whether you're using the bracket or you're flush mounting it, super simple and easy. But we still have versions that have side scan and down scan. Can you talk a little bit about the difference yeah, of those? Yeah, so we've got a few different models of hook reveal. Uh, the easy way to tell is it'll say right here on the, on the label. If it says it's a TS, that means triple shot. And if it says SS, that means it's a split shot. The difference there is side scan. TS, TS models have side scan, down scan, and chirp sonar. And SS models have uh, chirp sonar and down scan. All right, you talked about stepping up to kind of the, the middle child, which is no middle child, it's, it's, a, <laughs> it's a big middle child. You get networking, so you get active target, you get NEMA, so you get ghost and the ability to run external GPS sensors and those kind of things. Yep. Um, any other real differences between these two? Or? The, the other biggest difference really is gonna be a touch screen. So having, having the ability on here to actually touch what you're doing, uh, you know, zoom in and out on the chart, you know, really makes it really easy to, to uh, you know, find any data you want, do anything you want on the water here. That's going to be the, the really the biggest difference between a hook reveal and an Elite FS. And I guess we'll see some of those differences in the on the water we videos. Will, we will play around with all of those when we're on all the right. water. And then from here to here, it's the ultimate fishing system, right? We talk about Lowrance HDS is the ultimate fishing system. It's the biggest, baddest sonar we have on the market. It's the best screen we have on the market. You guys will see some of that when we actually get live on the water or not live on the water, but recorded on the water. <laughs> um, and you know, some of the other things, you know, multiple uh, output channels on the sonar, multiple networking ports, really flexible and expandable. That, that was gonna be the thing I was gonna mention. So we have networking in both models, right? In Elite FS and in HDS Live. But with having multiple uh, ethernet connectors on the back of most of the HDSs, it really makes it easy 
to build larger networks. So if you're going to put three, four displays on, HDS is going to make it a lot easier on you to build a big, complicated network like that. All right. So I think now we're going to go ahead and kick it over to the video we shot on the water showing some of the side-by-sides. There are, as I say, there are some basic tutorials in these videos that talk about how, you know, what sensitivity, what's color line, uh, you know, how does this sonar actually work. If you want an in-depth dive on that, the page you're on like right now, lorance.com slash live, if you scroll to the bottom of that, we've got two specific ones on sonar basics. We've got one on charting basics. We've got one on installation. So feel free to check out what you got below. Remember, we have Lawrence, a Lawrence team standing by right now in the live chat to answer your questions. Uh, and then when we come back from the on the water video, again, we're, Matthew and I are going to answer the most common questions you guys have from the video or just any questions that came up that, uh, that weren't covered in the live chat. So let's, uh, let's kick you out to the water. So we're out here on the lake and we're going to look at traditional sonar first. Um, one thing with traditional sonar that we do a lot of is we actually use a lot of artificial targets. We use tennis balls. Uh, if we're looking for really small targets, we'll use like fish floats or, you know, bobbers. Oh, yeah. um, but in this case, we're going to use some bigger tennis balls with some bags and an anchor. And Matthew, can you explain to us why we're doing this method versus just looking for fish yeah, themselves? Yeah, ab absolutely. So this is a test we actually use, our, our engineers and R&D actually use when we're looking at traditional sonar. So this makes it so that we can make a really consistent view of a bunch of different passes and see the same thing multiple times, right? If we try and look at fish or if we look at, you know, actual structure, you know, it's not always the same. Fish move, trees move around underwater, that kind of stuff. So with these targets, it makes it really easy and simple for us to see the same thing every time on multiple passes. Why a tennis ball? Yeah, so the tennis ball is actually really good. It's full of air right in the middle, right? So it really mimics the air bladder in a fish. And we can actually do multiple tennis balls in a bag so we can make them bigger or smaller. So we've got a few different sizes of, of targets here set up. And then we've also spread them out at different uh, different lengths apart from each other also. So we'll be able to see them throughout the water column also. So that tennis ball mimics the, <clears throat> the air bladder. So that's where we get the arc, right? Yep. And so when you go over a fish, going over this is the same way. How are we drawing that actual arc? Yeah, so what, what we do is, you know, we just send the sonar signal down and we get the echo back. And then as we're driving over, that kind of the line distance between where the transducer is and the tennis balls changes, and that's what makes that fish arch, right? As you go closer over the top of it, it kind of comes a little bit closer, and so it makes that, that arch shape. So the end is the edge of the arc as it first comes in, and then yep. it kind of comes up and goes back down? Yep. And that's what we're trying to mimic here. So we have these set up about five feet apart, roughly five to six feet apart. So when we drive over it with the different sonar technologies, we should be able to see uh, all the individual targets making their own individual group of arches and we can repeat that test over and over again so we can show you some of the clarity differences and also some of the differences you get with the different sonar technology so the beam angles and the cone angles that we're going to talk about yeah, a little it, bit later. Yeah, it really means that as we're doing this test, as you know, as we look at the three product families, we'll be able to see the same thing on each one and be able to show you the differences. All right, that sounds good. Well, let's, uh, let's get this set up and let's get going. Let's do it. Perfect. So actually here you can see the repeatability that we talked about. This is why we do the, the balls or the, the buoys. Uh, so that way you can actually go over and do the same thing over and over again. So we have four sets of targets. One, two, three, four. What's kind of interesting is we did do one smaller set of targets, uh, the third one up from the bottom. So we could actually make a smaller arch uh, where, as opposed to the bigger set of targets towards the bottom. One thing we've noticed doing these when we do it is actually a lot of fish will actually attract towards our targets. Um, so you actually get a school of bait fish hanging out right to the next to the top of this. If you look close, you can actually see the line that we're using to suspend that. So we just made another pass. That school of bait fish is still there. Uh, but you know, you can't always rely on those. Again, that's why we do the artificial targets. But here we go again, one, two, three, four targets in the water. And you can see if you look real closely right here, that line coming down. That's the, actual, that's the actual line we have these suspended on. And there come the targets again. You know, on this pass with high chirp, you can even see the anchor on the bottom. All right, so one thing we talk about is the fish arch. Matthew on the front of the boat gave you a demonstration of what a fish arch looks like. Here going off the edge of the screen are those targets we did. About two miles an hour, you can see the tail of them as they go down uh, in the, this the start of the arch. Then it gets taller in the middle and it drops down at the edge. People always ask, what do fish look like when you're sitting stationary? You know, why don't my arches look like arches anymore? Well, now these targets were anchored directly on top of these, on the, the artificial targets we suspended. They're no longer coming in and out of the cone, so they're not gonna make that arch. We're banging off the same place of that target over and over again at a consistent depth. So when you see something that looks like this on the screen, 
is when you're anchored up fishing, if you're you know anchored to a brush pile or drop shotting, vertically fishing, jigging, ice fishing, you're gonna see lines, not arches. Whereas if you're actually moving, you'll see arches and then the arch itself uh, at a higher rate of speed should get narrower and at a lower rate of speed should start to stretch out up until the point where you actually are stationary and it just stretches out and covers the whole screen. Another question we get all the time is people asking what are the differences in the frequencies? Uh, why would I want to use high chirp over medium chirp? And really it just kind of comes down to the application you're looking for. If you're wanting nice crisp clean arches where you can get really good target separation uh, and kind of see you know detail this is high chirp on this side of the screen basically you see the bottom isn't as thick the arches aren't as thick but if you start to see some of the actual detail between them and the spacing like right here between those two balls in that bag versus over here on medium chirp we're going to a wider cone angle wider cone angle is more coverage it's looking at more stuff so it's inherently not going to be as high detailed but I can actually see a little bit more information about maybe what the bottom is. I can actually see these targets bigger and wider. So if I were searching for a bigger area or even maybe wanting to cover a little bit more water and give up a little bit of clarity, I could switch to medium chirp. So right here frozen on the screen is a great example of what does high chirp look like versus what does medium chirp look like. And again, it's really down to that clarity, thin, high detailed, wider, thicker. So we talked about high chirp and medium chirp, but what we haven't talked about is the low frequency. So low chirp or 50 kilohertz. This boat, we don't have a transducer on that, uh, on here for that. I mean, we're only on 40 feet of water, so you really don't need 50 kilohertz. 50 kilohertz is really gonna be for you deeper water anglers that need uh, the depth penetration uh, that you just won't get out of 200 or 83. The transducers we sell with 50 kilohertz for the most part include 200, so you can still get that high frequency, clear, crisp image. But when you go much deeper and you need much more depth penetration, that's where you would kick into the 50 kilohertz part. You know, at a glance, there's a lot of stuff going on here. And I think that there's, if you're an advanced fish finder user, uh, there's probably some personal preference settings in here that you like. But for the most part, even I, I've been in this business for 24 years, I leave everything pretty much in auto. But what you might see is you see on the screen where it says A minus three. I've taken auto and I've told it, there's a little too much information in the water column for me today, right? We've had a lot of rain, there's a, so there's a lot of clutter in the water. Uh, we've also got a nice clear thermocline in this lake. And when I was trying to show you guys the targets, I wanted to back that off. So here's the default auto setting, right? Here's the thermocline. This is the temperature inversion layer in the water, cooler versus hotter water. Up top, you see a bunch of suspended small little targets or sediment. So you can adjust, even while you're in auto, you can adjust to see more information or a cleaner picture. There's no right or wrong answer. It's really your personal preference. I never personally recommend taking unit out of auto. Uh, even our sonar engineers use it, use it in auto, our pros use it in auto. When you put it in auto, you're telling the sonar, I know exactly how to dial it in for this specific scenario. And you might, you know, if you're an advanced fish finder user, you may know exactly how you want to get that picture for that specific condition. But the second you move your boat or the, you know, your water conditions change or you want to go fish a different area, you'll have to set it up again. Uh, I think it's a lot easier to actually get lost here uh, in terms of the settings versus just leaving it in auto, letting the unit do the work for you, and then bias up and down with auto plus, auto minus to get the picture and the amount of information that you're, that you're accustomed to seeing in your personal preference. So some of the other settings in here, we talked about auto and or auto sensitivity, and that to me is the biggest one for an angler to know besides frequency, I think. Uh, frequency on this transducer, uh, the transducer connected will tell you what frequencies it's capable of doing. This one will do 200, 83, or high chirp or medium chirp. Um, for most applications, I use the chirp frequencies. I very rarely use the dedicated actual sonar frequency. I think I get a clearer picture. I get better target separation. Uh, but they're in here if you want to use them. Uh, it, you know, it's, it's, again, if, you're, if you just like 200 for a certain reason or 83 for a certain reason, you can. I usually, again, default mine to chirp. Um, range, I usually leave on auto unless I'm trying to uh, fish a specific range or if I want to show a certain amount of the bottom depth. But again, auto, we have an auto button at the bottom. You can manually select a range. But if I say, if I'm in 40 feet of water right now and I tell it I only want to look at 20 feet, I'm telling the fish finder, don't worry about what the actual depth is. Don't worry about what's going on. This is the only part I want to see. For that, I leave it in auto. As the bottom depth changes, the, as the bottom depth changes, the, the range will change as well. Um, so we talked range, we talked frequency, we've talked sensitivity. The only other one on this main menu is color line. And this basically is um, biasing 
the color palette that you have chosen to highlight certain colors. So in this one, if you turn this up, you can see we bring in more yellows. So like if I wanted to see the actual air bladders in those, uh, in those tennis balls that we dropped over water, I can turn this up and pull a little bit more yellow out of it. I can also use it to kind of help, you know, differentiate bottom hardness. Uh, the brighter the color in this palette, the stronger the signal return. Or if I wanted to just, you know, clean it up and actually just wanted to get nice solid arches, kind of we run default right around here, uh, where I can actually just get a nice red arch. There's not a lot of yellow pulled in. Again, that's more of an advanced setting, I think, for people mainly trying to bottom hardness fish and get bottom hardness uh, information. Uh, but again, it's a personal preference setting. You can go too high and wash the whole image out. You can go too low and basically get back almost no information. I usually run mine upper 60s, low 70s, get a nice good balance. And then advanced, in here we've got all the rest of the features, noise rejection and surface clarity. Those are basically the, the things that help clean up the sonar image. Uh, they're noise filters. Uh, you can change the scroll speed, how fast you want the, the image to scroll across the screen. As you speed it up, you notice now these arches start dragging into lines because instead of letting the, the, the unit place a dot wherever I was, you know, the information came in, I'm just saying place it here so it's a broken line. You can also slow it way down um, to where it's, it's kind of creeping to a crawl. I never slow down. I usually run normal on everything unless for some reason I'm trying to, if I'm trying to track like a really fast jig or something like that, I may speed it up. I usually leave scroll speed on normal. Ping speed is set to max and I never change the ping speed unless I'm getting interference from another nearby fish finder. So the last thing I want to talk about here before I hand over to Matthew to talk Elite FS is we get a lot of questions, what are the differences in HDS and Elite FS? And as you saw in our intro, you know, the Elite FS is basically a baby HDS. Uh, it has a lot of the same uh, functions and features, even very similar output power ratings. But one thing I do want to talk about that makes this the ultimate fishing system and kind of our, our top end uh, platform is the fact that the, the sonar in this is a much enhanced version over what we have in Elite FS. This is dual channel output. You can run two different transducers at one time. Elite FS is single. Um, this one has, they both are one KW max output power, but the capacitors are the ability to put power in the water longer uh, with HDS. HDS can sustain that one KW a lot longer for a deeper, longer pulse, which effectively gives it more power uh, or more usable power. So this can drive transducers harder, longer, uh, it, is a, it is a better sonar engine overall, and again, dual channel versus a single channel in the Elite FS when it comes to regular sonar. And one last thing about HDS that can do over the Elite FS is the ability to do chirp and structure scan at the same time. Again, that higher horsepower sonar engine, this thing has the ability, the memory, the processor to run both chirp sonar and structure scan at the exact same time. Elite FS can run uh, side scan and sonar, just not side scan and chirp sonar at the same time. All right, so we've switched over to Elite FS, and like Jeremiah just mentioned, the sonar in these is is really quite similar between Elite FS and HDS Live, other than a few different, uh, you know, the, the actual output power being a little bit different. But here you can see these same sonar targets that we've been going over, and that was a relatively slow pass, so you see they're nice and big and flat. Um, not quite as flat as what we showed earlier when we were sitting still right on top of them. Um, but you can see, like I said, like Jeremiah was pointing out earlier, you know, all these colors in here, you see the school of bait that's kind of hanging out around them is still there. And if we keep it on screen, back up a little bit. So you get really nice definition on all of these, uh, you know, between all five uh, sets of tennis balls. This is on high chirp. So like we mentioned earlier, this is going to be your nice, thin, high detail fish arches. If I switch it over to medium, when we make our next pass, you'll see the bottom gets uh, quite big so that's the coverage area of the high chirp beam uh, you know just being wider on the bottom and then you can see just how much bigger these fish arches are as well um, so they are bigger but they're a little bit less defined if you look at them against what we did on high chirp a minute ago they were really nice thin fish arches now they're kind of a little bit blobby but they're really big and huge so that's going to make it really easy like if you're trying to uh, track a jig or you know a bait right underneath you having that bigger coverage area makes it easier to to hold on to so one of the other things that we've done with Elite FS is we like all of our Lowrance products to kind of look and feel the same. So that way, if you you know decide later on to upgrade or if you've got different models on your boat, they you should be able to walk up to a Lowrance and know how to get around, right? 
So Jeremiah mentioned a few of the, the um, settings on the sidebar menu over here, and you'll notice this is actually the exact same sidebar between Elite FS and HDS Live. So I have the same range buttons, you know, the same auto on the bottom, the same settings there. I have exactly the same frequency menu, exactly the same sensitivity, and so you'll notice again, I've still got this in auto minus three, like Jeremiah had a minute ago. If I put it back up to just plain old auto, you can see the, that um, thermocline come in a little bit more. You see the fish arches get a little bit more connected. The bottom comes in a little bit better. Same uh, color line and same advanced menus as well. So all of this is completely identical to HDS Live. All right, so again, just to, just to kind of, you know, uh, make sure you guys are understanding the difference in the sonar technologies between Elite FS and HDS Live, Jeremiah mentioned the output power. So they're actually the same max 1KW output power, but HDS Live can actually drive that 1KW a little bit harder, a little bit longer. It can sustain that for a longer period than Elite FS can. So you'll get the same output power, but you're, you're gonna get a little bit more performance out of HDS Live. The other really big difference is the ability to run chirp and side scan at the same time. HDS Live can do anything at any time, basically. Um, but one of the limitations of Elite FS is it just doesn't have quite the same amount of memory uh, in order to hold those chirp pulses. So you see I've got it on medium chirp here, and if I actually go over to side scan, it'll throw up a warning on me and it'll actually say stopped. And if I try and unstop it, it'll tell me down on the bottom that uh, I can't do that because I've got chirp running. So that's going to be another one of the, the limitations of Elite FS versus HDS Live. So now that we've had a look at Elite FS, we're gonna transition over and have a look at Hook Reveal. So Hook Reveal is a little bit different. So we talked about the similarities between Elite FS and HDS Live, but Hook Reveal actually runs a different kind of sonar engine than the other, the other products. And that starts right with the transducer, um, you know, un under the water, you know, how we're generating and creating the sonar signal. So Elite FS and HDS Live actually come out of the box with the exact same transducer. Most, most uh, dealers and customers of ours um, use our active imaging three in one. And that's got side scan, down scan, and medium and high chirp sonar built right in. With Hook Reveal, we wanted to make the easiest product on the market to use. So what we did there is we actually set up a line of transducers specific for Hook Reveal. And what we did there was we tuned them actually to make them have the best of both worlds without the user having to actually change anything. So the transducers that come with Hook Reveal are going to either be a split shot or a triple shot. And the difference there is side scan. Split shots have uh, chirp sonar and down scan in them. And triple shots have chirp sonar, down scan, and side scan. But the, what's really different between a Hook Reveal and an Elite FS and HDS Live as it relates to sonar is the, the actual traditional sonar that we put into the transducer. So we kind of went for a hybrid approach. So we talked a little bit about medium chirp versus high chirp on HDS and Elite FS. If you look at a hook reveal, you're gonna notice you don't actually have medium chirp as an option with those transducers. It's only high chirp or 200 kilohertz. And the reason for that is that, that actual sonar element that we put in the transducer. It, uh, it's kind of the best of both worlds. So you have, it's a high chirp uh, element, so you have those really high resolution fish arches, but it's also a really wide coverage area like medium chirp. So you get the really big coverage and you get the high resolution, high chirp signal at the same time. So we also talked a little bit about the output power and the actual sonar engine in Elite FS and HDS Live. And again, hook reveal is a little bit different. So since we gave you the best of both worlds in the transducer of a high resolution and the wide coverage area, um, another one of the differences is going to be, you know, your depth capabilities or your actual, you know, really high resolution processing that's going on inside the display. Um, it's a little bit of a trade-off between Hook Reveal and Elite FS there. So you're not going to have quite the same definition on the fish, on the targets, uh, or even on the bottom. And you're definitely not going to get the same kind of depth capabilities out of a Hook Reveal uh, as you are an Elite FS or an HDS Live. So if you're in saltwater or if you're fishing really deep a lot, you're probably going to want to look more toward an Elite FS or an HDS Live. Talking, talking about the, uh, the sonar that comes out of the triple shot transducer, I mentioned it was wide coverage area, but also really high frequency. And you can see that here on these targets. So you notice they're big and wide. So we're going about the same speed we were going with the uh, HDS and the Elite FS earlier. And these targets are a lot wider than they were on high chirp on, those, uh, on the other displays, but they're just as good a definition, right? So that's, that's gonna be the difference between having that wide coverage area and high resolution versus the kind of narrower coverage area of the high chirp on the other products. 
So that's, that's the difference right there. You can see it here in all of these targets. And if you look at any of the settings that we have, uh, so I mentioned earlier about Elite FS and HDS Live having the same menu structure. We've got kind of the same layout here, but it's a little bit different. So with Hook Reveal, we wanted to make it the easiest product in the market to use. So we put a big green auto button here. So when you see that, just know the hook reveal has got it for you. It's doing everything in the background. You don't actually have to go in and change any settings. It's all here. For anybody that does want to customize though, we do have the ability to turn that auto mode off. You just hit custom right here. And now you'll see all the rest of these menu buttons pop in. And now you can go back in here and you can change the frequency. You can change the sensitivity just like we could on the other products. Uh, but in the, in the auto mode, we kind of take them away from them and hide them for you so you don't ever have to worry about changing any of those things. So the actual biggest difference between a Hook Reveal and an Elite FS or an HDS Live is going to be the way you interact with them. Uh, so Hook Reveal is going to be all driven by the keypad over here. So you notice when we were changing settings on the HDS Live and on the Elite FS, being a touchscreen, you know, like for changing the sensitivity, we were able to just grab that little slider and move it up and down. With hook reveal being you know, all driven by the buttons, I go in here and I open up the menu, I switch it to custom. Now I can arrow down to my sensitivity and I can move that slider bar up and down, but I can't just actually grab it and move it, right? I've got to actually do it with the keypad, which works out really well, especially if you're in a situation like where you're gonna, maybe if you're ice fishing or if you're up north somewhere and you're wearing gloves, um, or if you've got, you know, if there's, you know, you don't, it's, a lot of people don't want to actually put fingerprints on the screen. They like being able to, you know, keep it clean and clear and actually see it really well. So that, that's another, it's, you can kind of look at it both ways, right? It's a little bit easier to run a touch screen, but sometimes in some situations, having that keypad on the side is really nice. So this is side scan. So side scan is a super important, you know, piece of sonar technology. This is how you really find bits of structure or the place you're going to fish. And you can see the area we're at here has actually got this bridge that runs right through it. So um, you can see here, this is you know a really tall bridge. You can see the actual culvert that runs underneath it. You know This was all here when they built the lake, all of these nice big trees on either side. You can see a rock pile over here. So with side scan, instead of you know looking straight underneath the boat with my traditional sonar, I'm actually looking 120 feet to the left and 120 feet to the right here. So if I'm trying to find a piece of structure or if I'm trying to find a fishing area, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to you know, come through the back of this cove. You know, I'm going to idle through here, or use my trolling motor going real slow, and I'm going to look for whatever it is that I'm going to try and fish. So side scan is really designed to be used, you know, when you're moving a little bit. Things like idle speed or maybe, you know, up to, you know, about three, four, five speed on your trolling motor. Um, so the way that the, it actually works is we're taking that sonar image and we're just lining up all the pings on the screen. So you actually get a really nice, you know, picture-like view of what it is that you're seeing. But when you're not really moving or when you're going too slow, you kind of see this kind of stretch. So you can actually see this tree here it looks really nice on this side and it's kind of stretched out down here below. That's because we were sitting still back here and then we got on the trolling motor and started moving. So as we're driving through, you'll see it'll line up these pictures of these trees really nice and even. So when it comes to setting up a side scan image, there's really only two things that are, are kind of adjustable or even worth adjusting in my opinion. And that's the color palette and that's the contrast. So contrast is a lot like sensitivity on traditional sonar. You know, there's an auto mode, you can bias it up and down. And what it's gonna do is it's gonna add kind of brightness and color to the, the color palette you're using if you bump it up. So you'll see all of this stuff over here, all these rocks on the left side, you know, they get really bright and hot. If I back it down, you, know, you can kind of see a little bit more definition, but they're a little bit darker. Uh, kind of the same on this bridge over here. The other one that's, that's, you know, a lot of people like to adjust is a color palette. So we default to this number six, it's kind of this brown. Uh, but you know, on a kind of a sort of overcast kind of cloudy day, you know, maybe I might switch it to the blue just so that the colors pop a little more. This is totally up to you, no matter, you know, whichever one looks best to your eyes. You know, a lot of the guys like this number 10 um, are professional anglers. A lot of them like this number eight because it's bright and hot. It's really just, you know, total personal preference to you, whichever one of these you like to run. So the other piece of scanning sonar technology we have is called downscan. And this is taking the same, you know, super high resolution, you know, picture-like images that we see in side scan, but pointing it straight down underneath the boat, kind of like traditional sonar. So you'll see like this big old tall tree here, like you can count limbs on it. This is pretty cool. Like you can, you can actually see all the really nice detail on it. You know, it actually, you know, trees look like trees, rocks look like rocks. You know, with downscan, everything looks like it should. One of the other 
core functions we have with downscan is a feature we call fish reveal. So if I turn this on, this is on by default on, on all of our displays, and you'll find fish reveal throughout the product line. So whether you're in HDS Live, Elite FS, or Hook Reveal, you'll find fish reveal. And what fish reveal does is it actually takes those sonar targets from traditional sonar, and we actually pull them out of the sonar image, we brighten them up, we kind of make them a little bit bigger, and then we actually add them to the downscan picture. So you get the really high resolution detail from downscan along with your big fish arches from traditional sonar. So we used to get asked all the time, you know, how come I can't see fish in downscan? You know, why, why do I never see fish there? Well, because downscan is, you know, more true to life, it, you know, it's more size correct for, you know, whatever you're looking at. You know, how big is a fish compared to a tree? Right? So when you see that big tall tree, a fish might be kind of hard to see, but with the you know, really big and bright and fat fish arch, they're really easy to point out. So here we're coming across this bridge. We looked at it on side scan a little bit ago. Here you can see it on down scan. So like I mentioned, it's, it was down here when they built the lake. You, know, you can see the pilings on either side. You can see the guardrail. You can actually see it kind of go off. You know, it looks like it's deeper, but it's actually further away from us you know, as, as down scan works. Um, and you can see this tall tree right here next to it with a bunch of fish sitting in it. So when it comes to settings of downscan, uh, this is, it's really kind of similar to side scan. There's not a lot really here to adjust. You got your contrast just like before, you know, auto, you can bias it up or down here. We've got it biased just a little bit down just to take out, you know, kind of some of the rain clutter and stuff from in the water. And then the color palette as well. Again, color palette, completely up to you. We give you 10 just so you can pick out whichever one you like, whichever one you like. Um, you know, there's, there's the brown, the blue, you know, again, a lot of our pro guys like this number eight, a lot of them like the blue. Uh, they're all here for you to pick whichever one you want. So here we've got side scan on Elite FS, and this is using the exact same transducer from the HDS Live. It's that active imaging three in one. It's the same one you would get in the box if you bought an Elite FS or an HDS Live. They both come with the same transducer. So looking at the side scan, they're gonna be pretty similar, right? Since they use the same transducer and the same actual side scan hardware in here. So you'll see we got really nice detail on all these rocks over here on this bridge that used to run through, you know, with this uh, before they built the lake. You see all these nice rocks and stuff on the side over here. You can see the pilings and the railing on either side. Um, so, but any differences you notice between uh, side scan and down scan on Elite FS or HDS Live are gonna be down to the screen. So we actually use a different actual screen in here inside the product uh, between Elite FS and HDS Live. HDS Live has got what we call Solar Max HD. It's a little bit brighter, it's higher resolution, it's better for sunlight viewability and viewability through polarized sunglasses. Um, but that's not to say that the screen in, in Elite FS isn't good. You can see here, this is really good detail. You see these rocks look really nice. These trees in the water column and over here to the left look really good as well. But anything that we saw on HDS Live, you know, it just kind of pops off the screen a little bit more. It's a little bit crisper, a little bit sharper. That's going to be all down to just the screen that we use between the two products. So here we've got downscan on Elite FS. Again, using the same active imaging 3-in-1 that you would get in the box with HDS Live. You can see these trees really nice, just like we could before. You can see the limbs on them really well. Um, you can see the fish arches from Fish Reveal. So again, you get the best of both worlds with Fish Reveal, right? You get your high resolution tree and rock and bottom detail from Downscan, and you get your big fish arches from your traditional sonar all in one panel. Um, again, since they're the same sonar and the same uh, transducer, you know, that we, you'd get between Elite FS and HDS Live, anything you see here is going to be different. It's going to be down to the screen, right? So again, not quite as bright, not quite as high resolution, not quite as good at viewability. Um, in sunlight or through polarized sunglasses, but you can still see just how well you can see all of this detail on Elite FS. So here we've got side scan on hook reveal, and when we were talking about traditional sonar, we were talking about hook reveal being completely different than Elite FS and HDS Live, and it's the same when it comes to side scan. So having that triple shot transducer, you know, it's, it's going to perform just a little bit different, but you'll notice that we still have a lot of the same, you know, high detail, high resolution imagery that we were seeing on the other products. Here you can see that bridge that we've, we've seen on HDS Live and on Elite FS. You can see the railings on either side, you can see the pilings, um, and you can even see these trees and these rocks in the rock piles, you know, um, on both sides of the screen. But they're just not quite as defined, right? So you can still see where they're at. You can still, you know, come in here and mark waypoints and come back and fish this structure but it doesn't jump off the screen just as well as it does on Elite FS and on HDS Live. But having side scan, you know, kind of in this, this entry level, you know, hook reveal level type product, 
is really powerful. So that means you can get one of the core pieces of functionality for a lot lower price point uh, than you've ever been able to in the past. So having a look at downscan on hook reveal, um, again, this is a little bit different than Elite FS and HDS Live, but it's using the same transducer that we looked at on side scan. So that triple shot transducer will give you your chirp sonar, your down scan, and your side scan all out of the one transducer. But here you can see this tree really nice. You can see with fish reveal, a lot of fish all around it. You know, these big bright yellow fish arches are all fish. And then you can see even there's one way down here on the bottom of this channel. That's probably going to be a catfish down there hanging out. Um, but having all of this on one panel, you know, really gives you everything you need underwater in order to be able to see where the fish are at and find your structure to fish. So now let's have a look at charting. Charting is super important. It's, you know, how you know what the depth is, how you know where your fishing spot is, what kind of structure on certain parts of the lake, you know, where all that stuff is located. We spend a lot of time working on the charts that we actually embed into these uh, displays. And we'll have a look at across all three families at the same time. But here you can see, this is what we call Contour Plus. It's embedded in HDS Live. And you'll see that it's got one foot contours. This is a, a lake where we've got, you know, really awesome coverage. We've got all the channels marked. There are some original, uh, you know, ponds and stuff in here before this lake was built in the 80s. Um, and, you know, other things like, you know, building foundations, fishing hotspots are all in here. You can see some really cool stuff. Like this is a, a highway bridge that runs across the lake. You can see the channel and, and everywhere right there. Um, and this also has a feature in it called custom depth shading. That's how you see these colors here. So this is what just our default uh, that we put in here for you. So we actually can color all of these different depths, you know, different colors based on what they are. You can go in and customize these if you want, but this is just our default. So Contour Plus is really kind of awesome. It basically in North America means no matter where you're at, you should have some chart. And most of the time it's going to be this one foot contour chart like this. So it includes inland and coastal US and Canada all right here. You can see I don't even have a card in here. So without, without a chart card, without anything, this is just the chart that's built into HDS. It's super powerful. So with the charting within Elite FS, this is actually the exact same chart we just looked at on HDS Live. So it really doesn't matter which one of these two products you're looking at when it comes to charting because they have the same built-in chart. So you see I have the same one foot contours, the same creek channel, the same building foundations. I even have my custom depth shading turned on so you see all these colors here between the depths. So this is, it's 100% identical to the chart that you're going to find in HDS Live. So even though they have the same built-in chart, there is one kind of charting related difference between uh, Elite FS and HDS Live, and that's gonna be the SD card slot. So Elite FS has only got one card slot here. So if you plug in a CMAP card, uh, you know, you've taken up your one card slot. If you wanna see a, you know, a different chart, like a reveal chart for wherever you're at, you, know, you plug that one card in there and you've taken up your card slot. HDS Live has actually got two card slots. So if you wanted to plug that CMAP reveal card in, you can plug it into one. And then if you wanted to keep a blank card in here for storing waypoints or sonar logs, whatever it is, you've got another card slot here to do that on. So you have just a little bit more capability with having the two card slots on HDS Live versus just the one on Elite FS. All right, so looking at the chart in Hook Reveal, uh, you know, we talked a little bit about the sonar engine being a little bit different. The charting engine in Hook Reveal is a little bit different as well. So we actually put a different base map uh, embedded into hook reveal. So this one is going to have inland US only. So it doesn't actually have coastal data embedded. But you st you can see you do still have really good contour lines. We spent a lot of time, you know, pulling one foot contours and stuff all across the country here. So you don't have quite the same coverage area, but you do have a lot of the same data. Another thing you don't have is some of the, the core features like that custom depth shading or photo overlays. You're not going to be able to do that in hook reveal. We do have a version of hook reveal that you can get it from your dealer that has that same Contour Plus card in the box. So you can get a, an SD card, you know, in the box with your hook reveal that has that same, you know, super awesome chart we just looked at on HDS and Elite FS. Um, but it's gonna be on a card. So you have to plug it into your hook reveal card slot here, and then you can get that data. And even with that card, you're still not gonna get the core, you know, key, key features like custom depth shading or photo overlays. And that Contour Plus card, you know, whether it's the SD card or whether it's the embedded chart in Elite FS and HDS Live, you know, again, it's one chart basically for the entire continent. So whether you're inland or you're coastal in the US or whether you're inland or you're coastal in Canada, with Contour Plus, you're gonna have the map you need for wherever you're fishing. 
So when we talk about Contour Plus, you know, whether it's the embedded version in Elite FS and HDS Live, or if it's the Contour Plus card that you can get in the box with Hook Reveal, uh, you know, it really is one chart for, you know, most of North America. So whether you're fishing, you know, inland or coastal United States or inland and coastal Canada, you know, you're, you're probably going to have the chart that you need for whatever area that you're trying to fish. All right, so we've been on the water and we've looked at sonar and we've looked at chart and we've looked at down scan and side scan. Um, but like, you know, I, I can see the benefit of wanting those full screen at all times. Like if, you know, if I'm using sonar and I want to drop shot and just only track that or if I'm driving on the lake <clears throat> and I want to see where I'm going and, you know, make sure I'm avoiding hazards or going to the right fishing spot. But I've seen guys put a lot of information on the screen at one time. Can you tell me what they're doing and why? Yeah, so being able to see, you know, like your chart and your side scan, or your sonar and your down scan together at the same time, it's, it's really powerful. And in my opinion, that's really where the magic happens when you're trying to find fish, when you, you know, you're trying to have a good productive day on the water. And so being able to put you know, multiple technologies together and actually piece together what's going on you know, on whatever body of water you're fishing is really what's helpful. Can you show me how to set that up? Like, I, I know when you go to the home screen, there's already some ones already there, but what if I don't see the one I want? Yeah, so being able to set up any kind of split screen is actually super simple, and it's the exact same process for HDS Live and Elite FS. So what we'll do is we'll press that pages key up there on the top of the keypad. It's the one with the two little pieces of paper. And that's kind of like your home button, right? It'll take you back to this screen every time you press it. Yeah, and I see some already existing over here, but I don't see the one that I want. Yep. I really want to see my chart and my side scan only. Can you tell me how to do that? Yep, so we do give you a few options there. Um, and chart and side scan is actually one of them, but we'll build one from scratch as well. So if you just press that plus button down there on the bottom, we'll make a little bit of a change to the, to the side scan and chart one. This will take you to our pages editor. And so what this will let you do is drag in any available technology onto the screen and then you can customize how they're laid out from there. So you, we've been talking about chart and side scan, right? So let's build that panel. So let's grab that chart icon and just kind of drag it in there to where it says no panels added. Just touch it and pull? Touch it and drag it, yep, and let go. And it'll drop the chart in. Okay. So now we've got a full screen chart. If, we, if that's all we wanted, that's what that would create. But we want to see side scan too, right? So let's grab that side scan icon and drag it in and kind of put it on top of the chart and let go. Okay, and this looks like the one that's in the favorite setting and that's not the one I want. Correct, yep. So you're like me and you want to see, we talked about side scan, you know, being really wide field of view, right? So I want to use the width of the screen, you know, whether I'm on a 7, a 9, a 12, it doesn't matter. I want to use that width for my side scan view. So you see those two yellow boxes up there above the, the side scan panel. Let's right touch that, yeah. yep. And that'll let us switch between whether the two panels are side by side or on top and bottom. Okay. So now you see they run the width of the screen, right? Yeah. And so I've got side scan on top and I've got my chart on bottom. Well, for me, I like to see my, my side scan on the bottom and my chart on the top. Okay. So let's grab that side scan panel and just drag it down to on top of the chart. And you'll see oh, that'll okay. actually switch where they're at. Yeah. So if you want the side scan on top, by all means, you can do it that way. I just like it on the bottom. So you click that save button down there and that will take you to that panel we just built. What if so, I want my side scan bigger than that? Yep, so we can adjust them as well. So once you've got them set up however you want, just tap the power key and that'll bring up the system settings menu. And you'll see one in there that says adjust splits. It's actually right under yeah. that standby button. Okay. And when you click that one, that'll give you a little slider that you can move. This is a two panel split, so I can only move it up and down, right? So if I want this bigger. Yep. You oh, can okay. More side scan and less chart, or you can go the other way, more chart and less side scan. And then now when I hit save, I have a really big side scan <clears throat> and a really zoomed in chart. Yep. You got it. So like, what if I see something on side scan that I want to go back to? Do I just set a waypoint and then have to set my chart plotter later to you, find it? You can do a couple of different things. So we do keep a lot of sonar data, whether it's on down scan, side scan, or traditional sonar in memory. So if you just touch that side scan panel, you'll see it'll bring up the cursor and you can actually scroll backward in time. Oh, so if wow. something that you're looking for runs off the screen, you can actually go back and look for it. So let's say you want to fish any one of those stand up trees right there, or those rock piles you got your finger on. Pile. Yep. So you can put your finger right there. It'll put the cursor on it. Now what you can do is you touch that little flag button. That's the waypoint key up on the keypad there. You touch that one and then you can name a waypoint, you can change the icon. If you want to make it a little green fish, you know, you can do oh. whatever you want. And as soon as you hit save, you'll see that jump, jump up on the chart. Wow. So now you just use your side scan to mark a fishing location and you have that location show up on the chart as well. Am I limited to just two things on the screen or can I do even more? Absolutely not. So let's say you've, let's say you found your fishing spot, right? You've used your chart and you've used your side scan to find whatever piece of structure you want to fish, right? 
and now you're ready to actively target whatever fish that are sitting there. So let's say you want to see your chart because you want to be able to stay lined up on your waypoint. So you need to right? go back and make a new page? Yep. So let's click that pages key and then go oh. back and find that plus. Yep. Yeah. And so let's say we want to see our chart so that we can stay lined up on our waypoint. So okay. let's drag the chart in. We want to see our sonar, right? So we can see, you know, our if we're vertically jigging or trying to sit right on top of them, we can drag our sonar in. And let's say we want to bring our down scan in as well so we can see those, those fish reveal, you know, fish arches and stuff. Now I've got all three, right? So I've got my chart. That's going to be half the screen, right, on the, on the left side. Mm -hmm. And then my side scan, or sorry, my down scan and my traditional sonar are going to be stacked on top of each the other. The last time we played with this, so there's probably options in there, yep, right? Yep, there's a lot right. of options in there. So a lot of guys like that kind of three vertical one, the bottom one, this so you one? have the same kind of screen size on all three. Um, I actually like my sonar and my down scan stack, but you can do whatever you want. Okay. Um, and then as soon as you hit save, that'll again make it, it'll take you straight to that panel and it'll make an icon on the home screen of that split. And so same now as you last can time, see I can adjust three. the size of these as well. Yep. Same as last time, just pay, uh, hit the power button. Yep adjust and then yep and now you have two things to adjust right and they only go left and right so you can you can make any one of them big or small oh that's really cool man that's pretty powerful um let's let's actually switch over and we're going to do the same thing on the hook reveal because it's not being a touch screen it's got to be a little bit different but i assume it's kind of the same idea it's, it's the same idea but since you're running it with a keypad there's a few extra button presses yep. all right let's give that one a go all right, so Matthew, now that you've shown me the principles of how to do this on the HDS Live, which is the same as the Elite FS, I'm going to see if reveals as easy as we say it is. You know, we did say it's the easiest to use product on the market. It's not a touch screen, so it's going to be different, right? It's going to be a little different. So what I'm going to do, I guess I'm going to hit the same pages button, go from my full screen sonar to the home screen, and I see add a page. Can't touch, right? So now no. I've got to do this with a keypad. So let's see how intuitive this is. Add a page. This all looks and feels pretty familiar from what you just showed me. So, I, okay, I just hit enter and I use my up and down keys to select up, down, left, right. So I'm going to do that same chart side scan. You got it. Now I want to do the same way you just showed me there where it's over and under. Yep. Okay. I see this little cursor icon. So I assume that when it highlights, I probably need to do something with that. So I'm going to hit enter. Okay. Now I'm going to go up. Now I've got the chart where I want it. Yep. Hit enter. And then I assume since I, again, not yep, a touch. You're going to want to go down to save. Down to save. And there we go. That was pretty straightforward, even though it was a keypad product, not a touchscreen, and I can't just do the drag and drop like I can on the FS and the HDS. That was actually still very intuitive. And like, do I still have the same option to do the split, the, the overlay adjustment you showed me or the split you showed me? You do. Yep. See that adjust splits button there? Okay. And you'll have the same thing. You can drag that little line since they're stacked top and bottom. If you want to see less chart and more side scan, move it up. If you want to see more chart and less side scan, move it down. All right, so on the touch screen, I was able to just, if I saw a piece of structure, I was able to just touch it and drop a waypoint on That's it. Right. How do I do that with a keypad only unit? Yep, so we talked a little bit about that kind of gold box around the panel being the active menu, right? Yep. Or the active panel, right? So any button you press is gonna affect that panel. So if you wanna mark a spot on your side scan, all you gotta do is you hit that, that button next to the power key that we haven't really talked about yet that's got the little cursor on it. That one right there? Yep. Tap that one and it'll pull the cursor up. Okay. So now you can put that on anything on your side scan panel. So if you wanna scroll back to you know anything, there's that, that there's culvert. There's bridge. Yep. Yeah. So if you wanna mark that, just put the cursor right on it. Okay. And now you press and hold that that uh, cursor button. The same button. Yep. And it'll, it'll pop up the waypoint menu. Okay. And now here you can do the same thing. You can give it a name. You can change the icon. There's a whole bunch of different colors you can put there, whatever. But when you hit save, it'll drop that, that waypoint on the chart and mm -hmm. on the side scan panel. And then I just follow the on-screen instructions, clear cursor, and I'm back up. And, and now running. you're back to live. Yep. And you'll notice that even while you had the cursor up, it kept pinging the side scan. So you didn't actually miss any data. So everything that happened while you had it, had the side scan paused and kind of rewound still is there for you to look at once you go back to life. Yeah, and if we want proof, it works, right? Like that was the waypoint we set on the bridge. Right in front of and us. And look there at what's coming up. Yep. So there's the start of it. That's awesome. Well, that's pretty cool. It's pretty powerful to see how you could actually, you know, combine all these different views into something that's very usable and very intuitive. I think it's pretty easy. Yeah, um, it's, it's taken all of the pieces of technology you have and putting them together, right, to kind of dissect the body of water you're on and figure out where you're gonna be the most productive, right? You take your chart with your, you know, whether it's Contour Plus or whether it's the embedded chart and hook reveal, 
you take your one foot contours, your channels, your fishing spots, you know, your waypoints, anything you have marked there, combine that with what you're seeing in high resolution on side scan and down scan to find whatever piece of structure you want to fish. And then your traditional sonar, once you've found that bit of structure to actually watch what's going on underneath you. You put all that together and you're probably going to have a pretty productive day on the water. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks for walking me through that. So we've been out today looking at side by side by side comparisons yeah. of HDS, Elite FS, and hook reveal. Yeah. You know, that, I think this helps answer the question that people ask all the time. Why do you have three product families? Why do you have three different price points? They're all basically the same technology, but we've seen that they're just very different in terms of level of performance, right? Yeah, yeah. So like you, like you just said, we build a different product for a different part of the market, right? So when we talk about hook reveal, you know, we mentioned several times, it's the, absolutely the easiest fish finder on the market to use. I mean, even with, you know, having a keypad, you saw us, I mean, you were able to fly around the, the screens and build pages and menus and all that stuff. Super simple, super easy to use. Um, when you step up from hook reveal, you know, to Elite FS, you know, you add a touch screen, you add some more sonar functionality, you know, a few other things, and then you even double down on that again when you get to HDS Live. It's really just the ultimate fishing system. Yeah, and it's great to actually see it, uh, see the technology, see how it interacts, uh, you know, just actually see those side-by-side -side comparisons. Makes it really obvious, you know, that yes, you get the same stuff, but you can get it better, better, and better all yeah. the way up the top. And again, all the way up that ultimate fishing system. So with that, I think we're done here at the lake. I think there's some rain about to roll in. Um, I guess it's just uh, back to us in the studio. Yeah. Welcome back, everybody. Uh, that, was a, that was a good little Q&A session we had live there. Um, it seems like just seconds ago I was out on the lake, and now I'm sitting here in the, in the, in the studio <laughs> talking to fast, you guys. It's a fast travel time. It's a very fast travel time. One of the common questions that came up was kind of some of the differences, not between the current products, but between some of the previous generation products and the current products. And one in particular we saw pop up a few times is differences in Elite TI2 versus Elite FS. What did we change? What did we improve? So here's an Elite TI2. It was a touchscreen unit, but it wasn't a multi-touch pinch to touch or pinch to zoom unit. Single touch, I could touch things, I could drag things, but I couldn't actually pinch to zoom. Um, it also, you know, had, had some basic functionality in it like wireless networking. I could network two Elite TI2 units to each other. But that was kind of the extent of the networking outside NEMA 2000, which I could connect to trolling GPS motors. antennas or trolling motors or audio servers. What is the biggest difference, Matthew, in like two minutes between this unit and that Yeah, unit? so Elite FS really was meant to replace uh, TI2. So you'll notice they look a little bit similar, but also kind of very different. So we have a nice flat piece of glass here, but there's also a lot of things that are similar. Jeremiah picked up the uh, SD card slot. You'll see we have the same one here on Elite FS. So they're meant to be, you know, kind of kind of similar, but also Elite FS is meant to be an improvement. Other things like the quick uh, access button on here that you can program on the front, drop a bunch of different waypoint symbols, that kind of stuff. So basically the same keypad, but you have a quick access key that you can program on that one that you yep. don't have on this yep. one. I also have a multi-touch screen. So you were talking about not being able to pinch the zoom. Right. I, can multi I can pinch the zoom on here. You saw that when we were playing around with, yeah. the, with the nine here and on the water a minute ago. But the real actual magic in the differences is around on the back. So if you look at the connectors back here, you see we actually have the same power, the same NEMA 2000, and the same sonar connector. But I have this little magic yellow connector here that you don't have. So this is our networking, Ethernet networking connector. So this is what allows me to plug in you know, multiple um, Elite FSs together so I can share my sonar data, I can share any charting, but really what it's gonna allow me to do is network in an active target module so I can get that new high resolution live sonar that you can't do on an Elite TI. So when people ask active target, why is it not compatible with TI2? It's simply because we don't have the You're connection or the hardware to, to plug run it. it. In. Yep. Uh, okay, um, that also goes to the question we got. We get quite a bit. We've covered in a few webinars. We, we talk about it quite a bit, but we can't uh, you know, seem to talk about it enough is what units is active target compatible with? So we know it's compatible with Elite FS. Yep, yep, that's like, like we said, this yellow connector back here, we basically put on here for active target compatibility. The other displays, obviously, it'll be connect. It'll be compatible with HDS Live, right? If it works on Elite FS, it's going to work on HDS Live. Okay. But what's really cool is we did a software update for HDS Carbon that turned compatibility on as well. So even if you have an older HDS Carbon, do a software update, plug your Active Target module in, and you're up and running. And the Carbon was one of my babies, and so was HDS Live. <laughs> so I'll just go ahead and give the differences, kind of the basics there, yeah. right? Um, we have only nine-inch units up here, so we can't show off some of the difference differentiating features. But if you look at a, a 12 inch or a 16 inch, HDS Matthew, Live. HES Live, Matthew talked about the single quick access key on the FS. 
We have four of those on HDS Live. 12 and 16. 12 and 16 that you can actually program to do specific functions if you want to drop a waypoint, if you want to use it down. to same, change a page, power pull up and down. I see people use it all the time for putting their units in standby, so instead of hitting power, then touching the touch screen, it's a single button push there. I use it for so, volume up on my stereo. Volume up on the stereo. <laughs> uh, obviously, the industrial design of HDS Live has gotten much improved over uh, HDS Carbon. No more drop to screen and a much better screen. So the HDS Carbon was the first time we went to IPS screens. The HDS Live is a better screen with better coatings on the front. Um, the other thing is really, um, the, so we have those quick access keys, we have the processing power. HDS Live is a rocket ship. HDS Carbon was fast, that's why it can still run the active target live sonar, but the HDS Live is the, is the, the fastest we have in the, in the whole portfolio. You got one more big difference on the 12 and 16. So with the HDMI, the HDMI port on the back so you could do video in, so if you wanted to uh, connect your phone up, uh, and you know if you couldn't decide between going to catch fish watching somebody else catch fish or watching the big game. Uh, HDS Live has it on the 12 and 16. We have an HDMI port in the back so you could uh, take the video out of your phone, plug it right in there. If you wanted to use your phone for Google Maps and put it right on your big screen, your big waterproof anything screen. Anything your phone will show. Anything your phone will show, you can see right on the screen. So that's a huge difference as well. Um, some of the other questions we had were more around the, you know, the hook range and what are some of the differences. Uh, just give me like the, the three differences between uh, a hook reveal and a hook two. Yeah, so the biggest difference is going to be why we named it hook reveal, right? That's fish yeah. reveal. Fish reveal. So hook, hook two models don't have the ability to do fish reveal. So we talked about that in the, uh, in the on water section, but fish reveal is going to be this page right here. So this is going to combine your high resolution down scan and your big old fish arches from traditional sonar. So we used to get asked all the time, how come I can't see fish on side scan or even on little downscan? Little tiny, tiny little dots. Yeah, and it's because it's more true to life, right? Yeah. Sonar kind of makes everything kind of big and easy to see and pick out. But with downscan, everything is really true to life size. So like I, like I said in the video, if you think about seeing a tree underwater, yeah. you know, the tree might be 20, 30 feet tall. Well, a fish in there is gonna be really little, right? But if you can take that big fat fish arch from your sonar, make it big and bright and bold and add it into your high resolution tree, now you get the best of both on one page. Best of both worlds without having to do a split screen. Yeah. Built in Genesis Live too. Make your own maps on the fly. Yeah. Uh, if you go to a lake that's not covered by our mapping um, or you have a small, like you have a pond on your property and you want to know what the map of that pond looks like, put a blank SD card in this, turn the sonar on, turn the Genesis Live button around. on and drive around and you can make a map And live. that map always is building on itself. So yeah. the more times you do that, the better your map is gonna be. Yeah, exactly. Um, real quick, I'm gonna ask the, the, the producer here, do we have any other questions come in that we needed to cover that we haven't talked about already? Um, battery voltage, how to tell your battery voltage. How to tell your battery voltage? There's a couple ways to do that. The, the easiest one is to actually just use your, use your, if you have a battery voltage gauge on your dash, you can look at supply voltage inside the units it's not the actual battery voltage, it's the voltage that the processor is seeing. So it's going to be slightly lower. Matthew's going to do an overlay here real quick to show you. So All basically to do, do an overlay, you, you press the power key. I think it's an other, right? An other, an under supply, supply voltage. voltage. So you press the power key, you'll get an option that says edit overlays. You go to add, scroll all the way down to other and then add supply voltage. And you'll see it pops up 13.7 volts And again, right there that's the voltage supply. inside the unit. So it's, if the voltage there is good, the voltage from your battery is great. If this yeah. voltage is reading, I would low. say lower than 12, yeah. you're probably in trouble. Your batteries are running a little low. Yep. Yeah, but it's just as simple as tapping the, tap the uh, power button here and go to edit overlay and then you can add whatever you want. You can also change those around. So if you put something like your speed up there and you want a yep. speedometer, make them bigger or smaller. Uh, you can put a bubble around them so they kind of stand yeah. out somebody from the data. Somebody asked in the chat, how do you actually make something bigger? So while we still have this highlighted, all you have to do is hit change, nope, nope, not, configure. not change, configure, and then go to size. You can go extra small, small, medium, large, or gigantic. I'm sure you guys can see that even without the so camera here's, on it. So here's the other cool thing. So you can also set those anywhere you want on any panel. It's just by click, yep, there you go, drag them around. And then you can configure those for any panel or combination of panels as well. Yeah. So if you have a certain piece of data you want to see on a split screen, all you have to do is add it right there. David, anything else? All right, I think uh, that's been a furious hour of answering questions. I hope you, I hope you all got a lot out of this. Yeah. Um, I think the on the water comparison was pretty eye opening for us to do it side by side. We always go look at them one at a time, but to go out and take all three and play with them in the same day, it's a reminder of why we have the three families, why yeah. we offer the three, the whole portfolio. 
So I just wanted to take this time on behalf of Matthew and myself to thank you for joining us tonight. I know you guys have other stuff to do, uh, but you know, learning about fishing is almost as fun as fishing. If, so if people want to watch this webinar again or see old ones, what do they do? Just go to Lawrence.com slash live, scroll to the bottom of the page. They're down there. We also keep them on the Lawrence YouTube page. So if you, there's any information that felt like it came way too fast for you tonight, and you want to kind of break it down and digest it on your own time. These stay up there for a very long time. Uh, and you know, there's all lost, also a lot of historical ones on there. So you could actually go back and look at the basics of sonar, or look at the basics of charting, installation of active target, how to use active target. Yeah. Those are all available. So Lawrence.com slash live. Thanks and have a good night.